Tuesday, November 1st, and this is Geek Nights with Brim and Scott. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. So, um, today I stayed homesick. Yeah, I noticed, because I woke up, and I didn't notice that you were home. I was just up, and I was doing my thing. And I, I figured you wouldn't notice I was home, because you don't go in my room. And nah, then you nah. saw my car outside, right? Well, I walked out, and your car was there, and for a second I thought, did he ride his bike? And then I realized, no, he's a lazy fuck. He won't ride his bike. So I walk in, I walk upstairs, and you're in bed. And I assumed you just overslept, or you didn't set an alarm, or you died. No, no, what happened is I woke up, 2.30 a.m. Oh, 2.30. And my stomach was uh, on fire. On fire. On fire. Well, basically what happened is I woke up, my stomach hurt, and I was like, oh, great, I'm going to have a bad stomach day. Then I looked at the clock, and I saw it was 2.30, and I was like, my stomach hurt bad enough to wake me up. <laughs> so after I aroused, I uh, I went to the, well, not aroused, sexually aroused, the other way. Yeah. Ooh. I went to the uh, to the bathroom, and I tried to get out some diarrhea, and it, it, it didn't want to come out. So, so... I was like, well, this is great. It hurts. <laughs> so I went back to bed. So uh, may, you think maybe it could have been the uh, lasagna you had at the diner last night? I, I'm betting it was, but but let me finish the story here. This is, it gets weirder. Ah, uh, great. So I, so I lay in bed a- after pooping out like the tiniest poop, not even diarrhea or anything, and it, it the fire doubles. Uh, this doesn't end in something disgusting, does it? It's not that disgusting. This doesn't involve your bed, does it? I already it? said the word diarrhea. It doesn't get more disgusting than that. And it could be like diarrhea that doesn't go into a toilet. No, it goes into a toilet. All, all of it. it? All of it. All of it. All of it. All of it. You're sure? I'm sure. Okay. So I sit on the toilet, and finally the diarrhea comes, and I get some relief, right? You know, I'm just kind of sitting there, sweating, you know, a little chilly, you know. Stomach hurts, some gas moves around, you know, that sort of thing. Then it starts to hurt worse. You know, it's building up some worseness. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to bargle. You haven't bargled in a long time. I haven't bargled. I got, I got a streak better than Seinfeld in my bargling. Ah, you almost lost it. So so I get down onto the, uh, eventually, I decide, all right, I just want relief. This hurts real bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bargle. Even though I wasn't that nauseous. I just. You Let know. me guess, you couldn't. I got down on the floor, naked. <laughs> on my knees in front of the toilet. <laughs> Thank the gods I didn't wake up and go take a pee in the middle of the night. I heard you rustling, and I was like, damn, he sleeps light. <laughs> I wasn't awake. You realize, you've seen my bed. My bed turns into just a twisted mass of sheets every night. Yeah, but you do sleep real light. I mean, I came in to, like, just change your clock, and you woke up. <laughs> I, I sleep real heavily, actually. But it's like when I'm asleep, and if there's something going on around me, I'll become aware of it, but I'm still asleep. Like, in my dream... And I can choose, I should wake up because someone's about to do something to me, or whatever. I wasn't going to do anything. I was changing your clock correctly. See, you realize I just, I that, wanted, I was one, imagining. I have a nightingale floor, like the samurai of old. Oh, yeah. And as you walk into my room, it goes, creak, Very creak, slightly. Creak, creak. It's not that loud. It's real loud. It's not as loud asleep. as my house. My house is like, But I don't sleep lightly. I slept through a house exploding. An entire house. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, I'll tell that story someday. So, so I'm on the floor, my hands and knees, trying to bargle, and not getting anything. Did you stick your finger down your throat? No, I don't do that. Why not? It would have worked. Because I couldn't bring myself to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I tried to push a little bit, and once I, I got some coughing, and it felt like the coughing was going to bring something out of the esophagus, but no, I, I got some mucus, like a, a speck. Is the story going anywhere? It does go somewhere. So I'm sitting on on the floor in the bathroom, not getting anywhere, right, and not feeling good. Uh huh. So the next thing I did was was I was getting a little tired. Did you fall asleep naked on your knees in the bathroom? No, no, no. I I, I did. I took a rest. I laid down on the bathroom floor, on, on the cold bathroom floor, naked. <laughs> now, now wait. Well, that, that's like right next to. I could have just walked out. No, the door. Know, I, the door was closed. I probably would have just opened it. Yeah, all right, but because I would have, I wasn't, that... I wasn't sleeping. I was resting. I was, I was conscious. But, but imagine my consternation if I were to wake up and I walked into the bathroom naked myself, mind you, and I see you already in the bathroom naked and and looks like you're asleep on the bathroom floor. Eh? I'm Actually, not sure. I, I might have had boxers on. I don't remember. I'm not sure what I would have done. Anyway, as soon as I laid down on that floor, I started feeling better. Ah, uh, huh. I, I don't know why my. Bed didn't feel good, but uh, bathroom floor felt great. Sure, you didn't take some uh, Percocet. 
I don't take the drugs. Little uh, Percodan? No, nothing. 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 So, so then after I feel a little better, I, you know, I got to do a little more diarrhea. I get up, do a little diarrhea, you know, and I'm feeling pretty good. Just, you know, I'm still all, uh, but I'm feeling better than stomach on fire. The, the fire was put out. Quelched. Once again, is this going anywhere? Yeah. So I took a shower, and then I went into my room, and it was uh, 3.30. And I was like, damn, I spent an hour in there. Well, you spent a good six minutes talking about this. So. Yeah. And then um, I, I used my little Blackberry to email the boss, turn off the alarm, went to sleep, woke up. And I was at home today. Uh huh. It's pretty good. Except the story for didn't the, go uh, anywhere. Except for the not eat. I was sleeping on the floor in the yeah, bathroom. But then I asked you if the story was going anywhere, and you said, "Yeah, it's going somewhere." Well, after. that was the climax. You need a little little rundown afterwards. You don't need a little rundown. Just climax the end. I mean, you had a little rundown, but <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So the Senate had a crazy thing today, but it wasn't as crazy as everyone made it out to be. See, I didn't think it was that crazy. Well, I wasn't sure because I was at work and I was about to leave. And you I, you exaggerate many things. Nah, because I, I went, I checked the FARC before I left work, just in case, you know, maybe something happened. I always check FARC. And FARC has a story, newsflash, mind you, and there's not even a link associated with it. It's such breaking news. And the actual FARC headline was, Democratic Minority Leader Harry Reid calls private closed-door session in Senate to scrutinize pre-Iraq war intelligence. And I thought, shit, something's going down. And actually, something did go down. But it's not crazy exciting. It's just, oh, they had a closed-door meeting. Woo. Well, it is fairly exciting because it's the beginning of a congressional committee to look into certain things that happened during the Iraq War. A congressional committee that will uh, find nothing exciting. No, because the congressional and that everyone committee will ignore. is three Democrats and three Republicans. Yeah, okay, 9-11 Commission found all this bad stuff, and meanwhile, everyone was like, oh, look what they found, and then that was it. No one did anything. Yeah, I'm trying to be optimistic here. <laughs> Apparently, you're a pessimist. Uh, look who's talking. What? I was all, I really assumed that Fitzgerald was going to get some people, and he got someone, and he's still getting people. Yeah, we'll see. They can indict people if, you know, like a witness during the trial says something, you know. A lot of people think that was the strategy, that he got the one guy so he can get other people. Yeah, I mean, if, like, you kill someone who, you know, was robbing your store or something, you know, and, and during your testimony you say, this guy was robbing my store, well, they, they just indict him right there. That's how but it works. the uh, FARC threat on this pretty much has turned into a flame war. Great. Oh, really? Really. Yeah, really. So, um, ice hockey... Yeah, I'm uh, really liking the fact that hockey's back. Yeah, hockey. Hockey is very much a geek sport in that traditionally geeks seem to like the sport. I mean, MIT didn't have a good hockey team, but the fans were real into it and real nerdly. RIT, RIT, very big geek school, very big. I think it's because all the geek schools are from the cold areas. You don't see the yeah. geeks at like... Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. Caltech? You don't see the geeks at Caltech or Georgia Tech like in the ice hockey. Oh, uh, yeah, they don't have the ice. Well, they do have the ice hockey, just not so much. Not so good. It's the cold schools. I'm telling you, it's a northerner thing. You know, the Messier line? Nah. <laughs> well, also, I think it is a very good game in terms of something that you can watch and appreciate on multiple levels. Yeah, as opposed to... Um, Basketball? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, that sounds so racist because basketball is so black and hockey so white. But it, it's basketball <laughs> is a good sport. The NBA is not basketball. I that guess, is how I say it. Yeah, but that, that still sounds racist to those people. Yeah, I like women's basketball a lot. Yeah, I'm not saying it is racist because I'm totally on the side that it's not. Nah. You know, and that you know, but a lot of people but, uh, say those kind of things. I do have to point out that my Red Wings are uh, really taking advantage of these new rules, and they're leading the league far and away, and no one's even close they to it. They played a bunch of crap teams. Ah, no, they played good teams. Eh, not so much. And they're in the easier division. Ah, uh, actually, they're in one of the hardest divisions. Nah. The only other team in there... It's it's so weird, because all the teams that were no good are now good. Like, the Nashville Predators, are like the, they're from Nashville. They don't have they cheerleaders at their hockey. That's how much they don't know about hockey. <laughs> they're doing good. And the New York Rangers haven't done good since 94 when they won. They're not doing good at all. They're doing great, they're do actually. What? No, they're doing terribly. No, they're not. I'll pull up. 